Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to the stunning Copper Coast here in Waterford. And I'm here today because I wanted to get some really kind of minimalist long exposure shots. Now, as you can see with the water, it's quite calm and flat. And I'm here on an evening before, so I have a day-long workshop happening on this area tomorrow. So I've come down the night before and I said I'd see what it's like and I obviously get some shots as well for myself. It's a location that I visited many, many times before. And I came here last time, actually last uh, December, uh, when I met up with all of the other Irish photographers and we actually were over in this direction here for that shoot. But for now, what I want to do is to get some shots anyway from this point of view because it is an absolutely stunning, stunning spot. I don't know, am I gonna go to this direction, this direction or am I gonna go to this direction? I'll probably go over here first anyway and see what it's like. But yeah, with the conditions where they are right now and a kind of a deep, moody sky and the water as well, I think I'm gonna get some nice shots regardless. So yeah. That's what we're going to do today. Let's go. For my first shot here, trying to go for my ultra long exposures, I want to aim for a two minute exposure. So for me to do that, I'm introducing my filters. And I have my uh, case magnetic filters here, which are really, really handy because they just allow me then to magnetize onto the front of the lens and there's no messing around with it. And I'm using my polarizer first and foremost to take off the sheen from the water here. The sun is directly up on this side, so it's almost 90 degrees. And by doing that then, it allows me to be able to get a bit longer on my exposure time. I have my ISO at 50, which is the lowest that I can go. And now I'm using as well my 10 stop, which will allow me normally to get a 30 second exposure, but by bringing my aperture up to F11, bring my ISO down to 50, and then putting that on there, it allows me to be able to get the two minute exposure. Now that's just finished cooking here and now looking at that here it's telling me that the sky is a bit overblown but I should be okay, I should be able to bring that back down it's right at its limit. But I'm going to take another one anyway here just to be on the safe side and bring it maybe just below the two minutes. And that's the challenge, you know, there are formulaic approaches built to get this exactly right but I generally try to wing it and it does necessarily work most of the time. So yeah, here is the first shot anyway here. We're going to go back over to this direction next and once I got all the settings dialed in we'll get the next shot after that. Here's the first one. Now, the next one is pretty much a case of rinse and repeat, but I've come over here to these stacks, and as you can see, the one, the larger one here is one of the first ones that I was photographing when I first came here. But now we have a sequence of them here in front, and what I'm making sure of is that I have separation. So I've purposely come up to where I am right now, the first small one, then the center one, then this large one, and then in the distance, you also have the end of the headland, which I think will also be quite interesting, but it's important that that is separated. Now, Going again at this at the two minutes, I think it should be okay. The light now will start to be fading as well because we are in the late evening, coming close to sunset. And also the tide is going out. And that's something very important is always be aware and study the tide so that you know that you're not gonna get cut out, particularly when you're on a beach where I am, which is close to the cliffside. So you could end up being cut off or stranded. 
Nearly happened myself and Michael Chamberlain when we were here that day with a high tide, but here now we don't have particularly large spring tide per se. But with this shot, I think it's going to turn out really nice. I'm actually very drawn to this area because I've taken a shot from here a number of times before at different uh, shutter speeds, but never now from the ultra long exposure point of view. So I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. Hopefully my guesswork will work out and that I'm not you know, going to get it wrong. But if I do get it wrong, it's just a matter of adjusting my settings. But I do think, fingers crossed, that it's going to work out. So yeah, here's the next shot now. Now, unexpectedly actually, I'm getting a burst of light which is hitting the headland over. So I've changed composition now to be able to get this stack, this, this, and this stack, and then the headland as well into the one frame. And with that, I think it's going to be quite nice. Now, it's also nice to be able to have the difference between the light here and the darkness. But I have to be careful, of course, with my exposure time because if I go too long, I'm going to blow the highlights because obviously that's a lot brighter than what it was earlier on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down to probably maybe one minute, 45 seconds. That will still smooth out all of the water and then it won't risk being the highlights are the cliffside with this glorious golden color uh, against them as well being blown out. Now because I've got that sunlight as well I think what I might do is I might send the drone up and see what the western horizon is like because behind me here is just a cliff so you can't, I can't see. So this is the beauty of having the drone so I'll send the drone up to have a look but I'll also give you a look at the footage as well so it's a two for one. So yeah here's this image now and then we'll send the drone up after that.
That was a pleasant surprise, actually. I can see a gap that was in the western horizon. So this is where the light obviously is coming from, but hopefully it stays long enough now as well for sunset. Now, as the tide is going out as well here, it's revealing more of the beach in front of me. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping more water that I can within the shot. But I've taken another shot there now as the light was changing because with these clouds, they are starting to catch some bit of color anyway, as you can see here behind me. This is glorious light right now. But I'm going to um, come down into this area here and maybe just pick out a couple of these here on the distance actually on that uh, there. There's a load of birds as well that are just sitting there and basking in the sunlight and hopefully they'll come out in the shot as well. I might actually throw on the long lens and just take a shot of that as well. I don't have the filters built to go for a long exposure on that one, but we'll try anyway. I'll try and see what I can do from that point of view. But I'm going to go down here now into the water. I have my wellies on, so yeah, I'm able to get into the water. As I've always said before, you know, if you're not getting wet, you're not a seascape photographer, you're just a coastal photographer. And what a coast this is. I hope you enjoyed the drone footage actually there. It's really nice to see down this direction and then obviously back up on this direction. I'm excited now to have my guys come tomorrow and to show them all of this stunning, stunning area. There's so many beautiful coves all along this coastline and it's called the Copper Coast. You can see the colouring that's there. It's not because of that necessarily, but it was used for copper mining, but also it has been formed because of volcanic. Believe it or not, this part of Ireland used to be on the equator and there's Sahara deserts and that sands and everything inside in this below here as well. So yeah, a lot of uh, ecological history in relation to it. In actual fact, I do have some spaces left for my March workshops if you'd love to join me for these here. I'd love to have you show you these different areas and show you how I approach a shot and hopefully you can end up with some banger shots of your own. But yeah, here's the next shot anyway here now. Gonna go down into the water here. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna put on my long lens and try and get that shot. I'll give you a look at that shot as well and then we'll check back in down here. And as hopefully, fingers crossed, the light continues. come down again to the water's edge it's opened up a whole different composition for me I'm taking this stack here and then this stack here and then I have this in between the middle and I'll give you a look actually here more or less what my uh, oops, composition uh, is like here you can see that I can see this far stack here and then surrounded by each of those and then you have the color as well also now a top tip actually, two top tips for you. Number one, when you're doing the ultra long exposures, make sure you turn off your image stabilization. If you leave that on, then it's going to have micro movements and you're not going to get a sharp image. And then the second is, particularly when you're close to the water like this, when a wave comes in, when, as the wave comes in, push your tripod down into the sand and then the sand hardens pretty much around the base of your legs so that you don't get any micro vibrations as well as the waves will come through because you want to make sure that it's as solid as it can be. And every wave that's coming through, even though these waves aren't big, they're still going to have an effect on the image. But yeah, this one here now again, I've gone for two minutes and looking at the sky here, hopefully, again, fingers crossed, I'm gonna get rewarded. But yeah, here's the next shot now here. I might have a look actually back over this direction and just take a kind of a sweeping shot of the cove while I have that light, it's starting to fade now. You can see the shadows here of the cliffs behind now coming up on that as well. So I might take it while I can and then I'll see where I end up for my final shot. Whatever that sky does, wherever the light goes, I'm going to follow it. Here's this next shot now.
the water's edge and I'm getting a shot here of the whole expanse of the cove and I'm right now in the water as you can see where it's below me here but yeah the light now is starting to fade as well which is nice timing hopefully I got a shot of it but also not a good thing if the light's starting to fade because I might lose the light in that sky even though it does look as if it's going to be promising but yeah this again now is another two minute exposure so it's been pretty much all two minute exposures except for the shot that I took here with the long lens of the birds that were basking in the light but now all I got to do is wait and hope that this sky now starts to catch some color it's been really productive actually you know it's been really nice to just play around here with no fixed time and yeah now as I watch these waves to see them continue to come in here hopefully this one doesn't go over my wellies but yeah here is the next shot now So looks like the best of the light is gone and I'm glad now that I took those shots while I had the light lighting up the cliffs because it was so nice and I've got now left with this one little sliver here I don't think it's going to catch any major color so what I've done here now is I've gone up to a three minute long exposure pretty much at the first composition that I'd taken when I first arrived here albeit I'm closer to it now because the water is receding I think this shot is going to be nice looking at it here on the back of the camera I think it works quite well I'll give you a look at this final shot here now. So thank you very much as always for joining. I hope you enjoy coming along to this stunning area on the Copper Coast and also my tips and tricks for getting ultra long seascape photography photos. Thank you very much as always for joining. Don't forget to join me next Wednesday for my Behind the Raw where I'll talk you through one of the edits from this week's episode. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And if you want to join me here again next March, there'll be a link in the description below places are still available right now as I record this video. Thanks very much everybody. Shlanga Fall.